I think living in these islands today is a challenge and a great opportunity. Uh, it's different from how it's ever been in the past. It's different for a bunch of reasons. First, because people are actually more free today to be who they want to be, to define themselves in however they choose to define themselves that at any time in recent history. But they're also more challenged than any point in our recent history. Brexit, the emergency around climate, the emergency around globalization and the distribution of capital around the world all pose great challenges, particularly on younger people. I think Brexit is a blip. It's, it's a very sad thing for me personally, but it's not the end. It's just a blip. It's, it's a challenge to our better selves, I think. It's a challenge to understand that uh, the best of these islands comes when we are outward looking, uh, when we are ambitious, when we are concerned not just about our immediate self-interest, but about those of our neighbours and our neighbours' neighbours, and when we are playing a leading role in whatever way we can in a global sense. All of us, uh, no matter what role we play in our society, uh, have a duty to unite and to demand, literally demand from those who have the great privilege of being in political office, the highest standard of government. A standard of government that is beyond sectarian interest and that is capable of leading us through this complex maze of uncertainty that is created by Brexit. I think the Brexit conversation has opened up questions that, that probably never would have been addressed. The interesting thing is that we had a Brexit referendum and a Brexit conversation that commenced three years ago and then all of a sudden in the middle of that we had an Irish unity question that was being asked. Now I think the difficulty we have is I think they're two separate questions. I think they're, they're, they're not the same question, they need to be addressed separately and independently. But there's nothing wrong with having those conversations. I think that probably Brexit catalyzed that conversation. We need to focus on working together, working better together. The word that springs to mind is the, the interdependence of the two islands because it's critically important that we get the relationship and the balance right. North-South is important, but equally important is East-West because we're culturally so similar. Geographically, we're nearest neighbours. We should be very strong, close allies, and I think that's hugely important. As we move on from a, a very difficult period, especially in Northern Irish history, when I look at my children growing up and my friends' children, I look, look at the younger generations, actually they have no connect to the troubles or what in the past. The things that resonate with them, the things that are important are jobs, education, health service. Actually, they're very comfortable with their identity. And I think the more we become comfortable in our own identity, the much easier it is to build those relationships. I think what has been good for Northern Ireland in this is that it's shown a light on, on what has been happening here. Because my impression from living here since 2004 is that people in the South don't really want anything to do with Northern Ireland and people in the rest of the UK don't really want anything to do with Northern Ireland. But there are some amazing things happening here. There are some important things happening here. People are doing really good work here in the community and also especially in the arts. So my partner and I met in New York City. Her visa ran out and I was at a crossroads in my teaching career and she said, why don't you come on over? Come on over to Northern Ireland. I chose Belfast because there was always this sense of um, potential rippling under the surface that I felt. And I don't necessarily think that it was just because of summer sectarian tensions that start to rise in you know, June and July. There was a real sense of, uh, of community. Uh, there was a real sense of people wanting good things to happen. And I always kind of got this image of you know, flowers coming through concrete and, and a, a real positivity to be able to come through struggle. Bronny and I became the first public civil partnership in the UK, all because of a, an administrative loophole that allowed for paperwork to get processed faster here in Northern Ireland than in England. It was a tremendous day, it was a momentous day. It was never about us, it was about everybody who had come before us and everybody who wanted to come after us. And little did we think 10 years on in 2015 that we would still be sitting waiting for equal marriage to come. At this moment in time, we are really looking forward to how hopefully this is this and a woman's right to choose. We're finally moving forward in, in those aspects of equality and human rights in Northern Ireland. We must diversify the stories that are told and develop the diverse voices out there. 
to make art, to tell our stories, and to hear each other's is a radical and essential act for us alone, for us together as a society, and for our future so that we may survive the shifting tectonic plates and change the course of events exacerbating the global pressure cooker which is about to explode. I was watching the Sky News um, report on the doomsday clock being 100 seconds from midnight and it just to me everything just feels very surreal and um, very like this is some kind of written like we're in a Netflix special or something like about the end of the world as opposed to like real life. It feels like loads of things are happening all at the same time that would have been unimaginable even five, ten years ago. And it's kind of very scary and very hard to know where to be in all of that. I think Brexit has really put Irish unity back on the agenda as a, as a, as a real viable thing. I would love to see United Ireland in my lifetime. I feel like partition is like a scar in the national psyche and that it, it's caused so much pain and conflict to people in all, of all identities. In the middle of my conversation with Donovan, he started talking about a project that he was working on about lighthouses, which had been prompted by Brexit. And he started telling me a story about trying to get a particular shot of a lighthouse at the time of one of the Brexit votes in the House of Commons and he wanted to get a, a shot from Tour Head of a, a lighthouse in the Mull of Kintyre. And as he started to tell the story, he, he was there, he was in the moment. Uh, we were in Bert's Bar, but he had shifted to present tense and he was enacting the, um, the evening that he had gone up onto Tour Head. And uh, I just thought, this is it. This is, this is exactly how this piece that I would write, this is how it would end, is with this story. But before I've had a chance to ask him anything, we've gone off in another direction. Talking about a cache of photographs he was recently shown that provide a new angle on Northern Ireland's recent past. It's the artist's role to deal with legacy, Donovan says, and I say what I've always said when the question of legacy is raised, that art might be the only way of dealing with it. For however much fact an official recovery process might amass, there is unlikely to be much truth in it. To which Donovan is about to say something else when over the Burt's Bar sound system comes a shuffling beat. When I was a kid, about half past three, my daddy said, son, come here to me. He says, things may come and things may go, but this is one thing you ought to know. It's only Jimmy Lumsford. I stopped Donovan. Remind me, I say, to come back to that song. Go on. And he does. The barman does. We all do.